<laughs> and we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast, man. It's Womanizer Wednesday, man. We're going to talk to you guys about how to get girls step by, by step. step. And we got a special guest in the house, the a.k.a. Couch. Casey, in the house as well. Shout out to him. Uh, he came all. He snuck here all the way from Brazil slash Colombia somewhere. I don't know what the hell he's doing Why here. Why are you here, bro? Oh, just to uh, regale you guys with uh, the better side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Stories from the other side. All right, let's get into it, baby. Let's guys, go. we got the new intro coming in. I hope you guys enjoy it. We made some edits. Let us know. Roll let's it. Rip. Miami Skyline, yeah, man. Rolls Royce, Range Rover, hella guest, special guest, man. Yep. It was a fire intro. Yeah, guys, that intro took us a, a bit to to make, man. We had to, you know, pull a bunch of clips together. We had an editor do it, and he's, he's too busy doing reggaeton music videos. So, Roberto. you know, he made it happen, though. Shout out to him. Um, And we got Big Mo in it, man. Shout out to Big yeah. Mo in the fucking uh, trailer as he well, He actually fit. He actually fit. He fit in there. That's awesome. He didn't have to use that wide of a lens camera. Yeah. So, um, you got anything you want to say, Mo? I can see you over there uh, moving some shit around. So go ahead. Yeah, thanks to the Myron plan, I'm able to fit in the camera now. Okay, Yo, you know what enough. actually would have been funny as hell? Chris holding some peanut butter. <laughs> wow. <That'd be> hilarious. <laughs> uh, fair <laughs> enough. That would have been very funny. But all right, we already got 1,600 plus you on here. Guys, like the video. Today's a very up- important episode. We're getting back to the basics, to the teaching you guys how to womanize. But before we do, patreon.com slash fresh fit. Check us out there for all the behind the scenes content. Also, guys, we're on Megaphone. We're no longer on um, Anchor. Spotify slash Anchor slash Apple. We're now on uh, Megaphones. So if you guys want to listen to us there, um, just make sure you wear headphones so you don't get fired from your job. Also, check us out on discord.gg slash fresh fit. Completely free to join. Fresher podcast store to get the merch, hoodies, t shirts, all Wait, the merch you guys are way, to learn happy and love. birthday, uh, Dorkhead. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Dork. Oh, okay. Okay. Today's UK. His birthday, the yeah, Dork. Birthday. One of our longtime supporters slash OGs, man. Shout out to him. Shout out to the UK. Shout out to the all of them. The Mandem. Mandem. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, shout out to, uh, okay, yeah, fresherpodcaststore.com. Also, Fresh Fit Clips, guys, our other YouTube channel where we post clips. We post three clips on there per day, and we also post two shorts per day. So check us out over there on Fresh Fit Clips. And then also, Fresh, you want so much of Vlog Channel? Robert? Yes, guys. Vlog Channel is at 100K. Thank you very much for that. And I'm going to post a vlog tomorrow because me and Myra lost our wallet. So we didn't venture to get back our wallet. Yes. It was funny to see what happened, where we went. And uh, who won the uh, stupid rock paper scissors contest? Yes, that's, yes, that was hilarious. Thank you, Fresh, for the gift. By the way, I appreciate that. Great no problem, man. It's the uh, least you could do for all them so goddamn dinners Myron... I pay for. <laughs> Sorry, bro. But imagine Myron in a, in the LP store. Louis I was Tom extremely store. uncomfortable, that was but awesome. I was there. That was awesome. Yes, I was very uncomfortable. Speaking of 100K, oh yeah, yo, yo guys, spend a hit at uh, 100K as well. Oh uh, yeah, we got five yeah. plaques across the different channels. Mouse all the baby. haters. Fucking suck it, man. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. We're gonna just say whatever we want to say now. We finally yeah. made it. Niggas, we got five plaques now. We got a channel at a million, yeah. another channel at 305, 304. Yeah. I don't know what it is nowadays. Yeah. 100k, 100k. Yeah. All the fucking haters suck a dick. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. That's what I'm talking Get about. Pow. Fuck yes, them. Get pow. All the fucking losers. We left you niggas man we beat you guys on content when it comes to podcasts we beat y'all on womanizing beat you guys even in crime documentaries Damn. we got you guys be on everything and vlogs. and vlogs and it's only the beginning yeah it's only been two years the empire is just starting to just strike saying, back bro and we got Damn. some random ginger on the couch hey oh, hey he, introduce he, yourself he, man he's my soul he's my soul yeah so i go by casey redbeard uh i've been here since day zero was there the day that these two clowns met yes he was and like uh, I said, clown. <laughs> Screw you, bro. Screw you, dog. Yo, Mara said they beat them in uh, everything. He's even beating them off as well. So that is true. <laughs> only on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm just here to enjoy in town uh, for a brief while. Here to kick with my boys. Yeah, hey, we're, man. We're gonna smash, bro. Um. <laughs> I mean the video game. I'm gonna come out on top. Speaking of which, uh, shout out to Casey because Casey's gonna actually be coordinating um our um 
Columbia trip when we go yes. out there to yeah. Columbia and do a podcast out there. A yeah. lot of you guys have been asking us to do uh, podcasts in different places, so we're going to make sure to do an F and F after hours in, in Columbia. Columbia for y'all, man. Yep. So Casey's going to be coordinating that because uh, that's the only place you can get girls. Listen, but anyway, I've just uh, seen his host parties <laughs> on Instagram. They're pretty lit. It's a bunch of girls, only a couple, couple guys. So house parties look lit, bro. Yeah. So, hey, man, this is a big important thing, man. Don't forget the people that were with you from, from day the one. beginning, bro. Don't yeah. forget. But yeah, oh, I forgot to say, yeah, Fed 1811, guys, I uh, the, I got the takeoff video up, man. It's doing really well. I break down um, the shooters that were identified, right? I gave my, you know, how do I say this? Predictions, predictions. on what I think is going to happen. I predict that the, or the shooters are going to probably be arrested in the next week or so. They pretty much have them identified. Mm. Um, and yeah, man, I break down the case and go through different clips and everything else like that. So if you guys want to check it out, man, Fed 1811, breakdown cases on there. Also serial killers, terrorists, everything. I'm going to drop the conspiracy theory on 9-11. Former Fed reacts to that on tomorrow. So check that out. And we already got 3,001, uh, 3,100 y'all in here, man. Like so, the video, man. Uh, so you know what, man? Since we're behind on schedule a little bit, uh, Chris, I think I'll get right into it, and then we can read the chats after. Or should I read them now? You uh, tell me. Do it now, and then twenty bucks and up after this. Okay, cool. So I'll run through them real fast. Uh, Neon VRP. Oi, Brev. I hear women say all the time he doesn't communicate as a disqualifier. It's so vague. What do they mean by that? Uh, what they mean by that is um, you're not giving bro, them what they actually yeah. want, which is they want to hear you say you look beautiful, this and that. Listen, man, if she's still there after you're on your grind, bro, that's all that really matters. Now I will say this though: make time for her, but don't make it. Everyday thing, if that's not who you are, so. they'll, they'll also use it as a bullshit reason to break up with you, bro. Yeah, like true. they'll say they'll say that. Where it's like, if Chad didn't communicate with them, they wouldn't care. <laughs> uh, brother Myron, what are your thoughts on Brother Andrew's recent conversations to the last true religion in the world? Assalamu alaikum, hey, amen. Andrew knows what time it is. Uh, shout out to Andrew Tate, Great Greg time. Van Der Slu. Okay, Louis Brito goes, Congrats on a woman. I'm so sorry, I mistakenly said 100k on my last super chats. Okay, bro. Thank you for being a positive force in my life, FNF. That includes everyone on the team. Yeah, awesome, we got bro. you, bro. Joseph Bradley goes, uh, Eight bucks all the way, no, seven bucks from Great Britain. Uh, Walter smashing fours all week. Okay, <laughs> what's up, guys? <laughs> this is going to be fire show with lots of free content value. 105 k on the way. Let's go. Thank you. Uh, free Joe funny, Exotic bro. from Michael Trilsey. Appreciate that. Pedro. Uh, goes shout out to fresh and fit love what you guys stand for is there a playlist where i can find all the fitness workout dieting content on youtube and or patreon we have a whole fitness playlist i, I gotta make the playlist in for y'all but i'll make it mm -hmm. uh michael trusting la 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 wait till i get my, my money, money right. right okay uh la la okay then fresh can't push me off the couch right okay shout out to you <laughs> michael trusting free joe exotic then i'm thinking then I'll free R. Kelly. Okay. Uh, Michael Trillstein is top Jew, and that's for Michael Meestroke. Sorry, Brokies. It's hard for me to hear you, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Michael Trillstein, man. And then Michael Trillstein goes, I don't know how y'all can hate outside of the podcast. You can't even get in. Let go. go. And then it's my fault. They're late, guys. Fresh had extra Louis Vuitton laundry after his massage. Well, you were actually right on this one. Uh, Looked what? at the time and found it was late for the podcast. Then I remembered it was the Fresh Fit podcast. Congrats on 100K. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Push it to the limit. Uh, intro, Dabble in the Dark, and that's from Myron's Alter Ego. Uh, shout out to the FNF Discord OGs and uh, my USO. Uso. Big Mo. Buso, okay. Uso. Uso. And yeah, if Oso. you guys want the remixes for the songs that I use on our song, uh, we got a new intro, outro, by the way. You guys just stay till the end of the show for that yeah, new outro. You're going to see it. All the links are below. Shout out to Chris and Black Wolf Inc. Shout out to you. I built myself up, makes $160,000 a year, in shape, six feet tall, fluent in Spanish. Where do I meet all the baddies in Miami without going to the club? Winwood. Um, <laughs> you can go to uh, Bayside as well. I do recommend if you want to find Latino girls specifically, Doral. Go to the mall over there. Um, and yeah, just just vibe out. Yeah, uh, I feel like Chris was on the short bus kids that one of the short bus kids uh, that worked in school stores selling snacks. P.S. Chris is a bum. Okay, <laughs> happy birthday, Dorka. Thanks uh, for Michael Trussi. Michael Mistro goes haters can suck a dick. Yeah, they definitely a, can, a duck, bro. A duck, a duck. He said a duck. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sup, fellas? How do you guys deal with a girl who cries a lot? Or if she cries and is quite emotional, should I be there for her emotionally? No. Ooh. Is she your girlfriend, is bro? Your group? Yeah, if it's your girlfriend, it's different. That's one thing. But if it's like a random chick, fuck no, bro. Yeah, bro. Uh, what's good, fellas? FNF gang, we have Discord gang, we have BBC gang, we very up. Big Mo waistline down, baby. Yes, it is. Yep. Then the last one here, Michael Trillstein, congrats on 100K for Feta. Congrats on 100K for Fresh Prince CEO. Congrats on Zulia for Big Mo. Congrats, Eric New Place. Congrats, Anwar for Cars. Congrats, Chris. For peanut butter. Thank you, fam. Sir, I could have said it better Christine. myself. Shout out to him. Um, but right. Yeah, no, man. I mean, guys, it, it's been. I, I do want to take this to just say a quick second. That was our goal, man, to hit 100k on the on the personal channels. Yeah, and then definitely a million on the main one. Now the next goal is a million on the damn clips channel. Fact. That's the next goal, man. One million on the clips. But anyway, uh, so without further ado, guys, today's topic. We're gonna go through back to the fundamentals and teach you guys 
how to get girls to get girls step by step step by fucking step and if you guys are wondering <laughs> i got the easel out which means if i got the easel it's time to go to class so i'm gonna go ahead and flip this bad boy around y'all gonna see everything that we got here and we got vassal a Havarius hundred dollars super chat shout out to you for supporting but yeah man back to the basics guys back don't in the day go, all we had was our one-on-one -on -one episodes talking about you know female nature money investing so now we're back to the basics so here we go Sources, right. how to smash through a forest. What the <laughs> Yo, he wrote this, bro. This is Mari's writing. Uh, he wrote Mari. this. Misogyny. Misogyny. <laughs> what the fuck? Think <laughs> <laughs> it's how to smash through a forest. All right. W in the chat. W in the chat. Okay. Right. Sources, leads, content info, setup. All right. So we're going to start here. Full breakdown. Right, guys. Can you guys hear me? Cool. I got the other mic. So uh, we're going to start here, guys, with um, sources. With sources, okay? So with the sources... And I think you guys can see this. Uh, I want to yeah, make sure that they can, yeah, see they can see it right nice yeah. and clear. All right. So we're going to go step by step, guys, how to get girls. OK, and we're going to start here with the sources. OK, there's four main ways to source your 304s. You got a cold approach, dating apps, Instagram and social circle. This right here is going to account for like 99 percent of your leads. OK, of the girls that you deal with. Now, cold approach, guys, can be broken down into uh, two categories essentially day game night game what is day game day game is you going to you know maybe a bookstore the mall you might meet, might meet a girl there uh the mall you know you you know kind of meeting a girl throughout your day-to-day -day activities the grocery store etc park okay night game is where typically i consider there's alcohol being served and people are there to socialize lounge Nightclubs, bar club exactly um even a pool party i would constitute as night game to a degree yeah because even though it's during the day technically it's not necessarily day game because you're going there in a social type situation right so um shout out to chris by the way uh, should i even, let me put my headphones on all right so <clears throat> am i still getting good audio okay yeah. well you'll have to monitor for me uh we can hear you all right. And then uh, so then you got um, dating apps, guys. So obviously we know the big three, right? It's Tinder, Bumble, Hinge and Sugar Sites. OK, uh, I know the, the writing might be a little hard to read there, but I promise you that's what it says. Yeah. Then here, Instagram, you got, you know, traditional DMs and then the Discover page. OK, yeah. then on Social Circle Game, you got school, work, parties. This guy's right here is how most normal guys, normies, meet girls is through so school, work, or through like maybe a so some kind of social gathering or party of people they may know. But if you're really skilled, you're going to get most of your girls through these top two, okay? Dating apps, because I consider Instagram a dating app too, to be honest with y'all. But, you know, I'm, I'm differentiating it because a lot of people don't look at Instagram as a dating app. And just for all intents and purposes of this podcast and explaining it to y'all, that Instagram is its own entity. But to be honest with y'all, man, it's its own fucking dating app, bro. And these girls are using it as a dating app. That's the main thing. Girls <laughs> use Instagram as a dating app. Only a select few of men can use Instagram as a dating app. That's the big difference. Okay, guys? Yep. So just know that. Hopefully that becomes you. Hopefully. <clears throat> and hopefully you guys watch us. You guys are going to understand the importance of uh, Instagram, and that will be you next. So these are the four main uh, uh, sourcing methods. Okay, guys? So number one, cold approach. Number two, dating apps. Number three, Instagram. Number four, social circle. Okay? And broke it down even more. Cold approach is day and night game. Dating apps are Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, Sugar Sites, um, you know, Match.com, whatever it may be. Instagram, yeah, typically through DMs, then Discover pages, right? And then you got, uh, or if you got up in the algorithm, people might discover you. Yeah. And then you got here, Social Circle Game, which is school, work, parties. And this is where most, most guys meet their girls, which I don't want you guys to be stuck here. This is what where most guys fuck up because they only meet girls through their social circle. Yeah. And unfortunately, if your social circle isn't big or you're not a cool guy or you don't have higher social status, guess what? You're not going to be able to leverage social circle game to get girls to the same degree. Only a select few guys can run social circle game and have it really work. Guys like our boy Tristan Date, right? Mm. Dan Bozarian, et cetera. These guys are running social circle game and Instagram in tandem because they have high social status. Hey, come hang out with me. Bam, they become a part of their circle. Not all the girls might necessarily be a part of their circle because, you know, he has like hundreds of girls in their shit. But that allows them to go ahead and get other girls. So social circle girl game works for the average guys, right? But they'll get like some girls, not as many as they want. And then the really elite fucking guys that can literally just use this in tandem with Instagram. And then they don't have to worry about this other bullshit, cold approach and uh, dating apps, right? They don't need that because Instagram works as a dating app for them. But like I told y'all before, right? Instagram is a dating app only for the highest tier of men, all right? Okay, now once you get 
once you meet a girl through one of these, you know, uh, how do I say this sources, right? Cold approach, dating apps, Instagram, or social circle, then you get their contact info. All right. And this is typically going to be a phone number, Instagram, right? Uh, direct messaging, WhatsApp. If you're in a foreign country, right? Like when we're in Romania and London and shit like that, we had to rely on WhatsApp, right? Yeah. Or other, maybe telegram, maybe Facebook messenger, whatever it may be, but you need to get contact information once you meet the girl. Okay. Now, personally, guys, my tip is you want to get at least two forms of contact information. What do I mean by this? I mean, you want to get an Instagram, right? And you want to get a phone number. That's what I say is typically the one-two punch. Why do I say this? The reason why is because when you DM the girl, <clears throat> when you when you, uh, when you you get her phone number, when you get her contact information, right? You want to get her Instagram so that she has your Instagram, assuming your Instagram is good, of course. If it's trash, then eh, you, you get on the waiting list. Yeah, tell them about the waiting list real quick. Guys, so <laughs> we mentioned earlier about Instagram being a dating app, right? In my opinion, humbly, it's one of the biggest, biggest dating apps in the world. Now, just to add to that point as well, if you're a guy out here living life, trying to talk to girls, I'm telling you right now, they don't know who you are from Jack Joan or Jane Doe. So they need to know who you are before they ever go on a date with you. So my thing is like, put your Instagram first as a resume, kind of so they can see who you are. That way it's easier for you to call them on a date or set up like a, a meeting for yourself. So my thing is like, guys, we have a waiting list now for the actual course, Deals on Demand. Hop in there now so you can learn how to use your Instagram correctly and get what you want out of life. So there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right. Um, so going back to it, guys, the thing is here is that you typically want to get two forms of contact. I would always say either a phone number or WhatsApp if you're in a foreign country and the Instagram. And the other thing, too, about the Instagram that's important, guys, is the Instagram is going to do what I call passive demonstrations of higher value. OK, and the passive demonstrations of higher value are done through your pictures, your stories, and the girl's going to kind of get an insight into your lifestyle. So let's say you met her in person. Right. And you get you and you, you, you know, you were somewhat attractive, like she thought you were cute, but you have a good Instagram. And then she looks at your Instagram. She's like, oh, wow, this guy lives a certain lifestyle, whatever. That might bump you up some points, which will push you over the edge to go ahead and finally secure that day, which we're going to talk about here that in a second. But the thing is, guys, is that when girls meet you, they're looking to disqualify you. So sometimes, right, if your SMV isn't that high, you might have to make up for it in other ways. And the Instagram can help you do that with either good pictures or lifestyle. Let me add to that point as well. So some guys are like, oh. Well, I give her my Instagram. I just give her my phone number. That's fine and all, but guess what? Let's say she spoke to 10 guys that day, right? You all give her, you all give her your phone number. How is she going to know who's who? So my thing is, if you add a phone number and Instagram, now she knows who you are. Oh, that's, that's a guy from earlier. Or she might see your story and so on and so on. So my thing is, like, add both of them in there to have a better chance of getting that girl on a date. So, yeah, man, you want guys, it, it comes down to like simple mechanics. You want two points of failure, not one. If you have one point of failure, you're done. But if you got two points of failure, it gives you another backup so you can communicate with her. Here's the other thing, too. Let me give you guys a cold, hard secret about bitches today. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. They won't even remember who the hell is behind the phone number. Facts. Girls a lot of times will fuck you three times and not save you until the fourth time you smash, bro, in, the, <laughs> in their phone context. That's the reality. So sometimes a lot of actually a lot of the times. When you text a girl, she might not remember who you are, but if you DM her, she'd be like, oh shit, I remember him because she's able to actually able to put a face to the name. The amount of attention that girls get and the amount of phone numbers that girls get, it's very difficult for them to go ahead and keep track of all of them. The average girl, guys, is talking to five to 10 different dudes. That's just the, the cold, hard reality of the dating marketplace. If she's somewhat attractive, that's how it is. Are all 10 guys fucking her? Maybe, but I'll tell you this. She's talking to them and getting attention from them because like I told you guys before, women aren't like us. They will sit there and talk to dudes all day and waste the dude's fucking time and be okay with it versus you will never sit there and talk to a bitch without having the intention of smashing her, but she will definitely sit there and talk to you with the intention of not smashing you. Yep. That's the difference. They'll sit there and get your free attention if you allow it. And so, we all have that person we texted and said, hey, this is Jack from LA Fitness. Who's this? Bro, how about everybody, bro? So if you have Instagram, way better bet for you. That's, that's all we're saying. Yeah, man. So two points of contact, guys, especially in today's day and age, right? So phone number and an Instagram. Again, if your Instagram sucks, don't give it. Yeah. Because if your Instagram sucks, and let's say she had a good interaction with you, right? <laughs> she thought you were cute or whatever. Then she looks at your Instagram, you got some bathroom selfies, and you look like a fucking idiot. Well, my friend, that's going to be a big... Uh, L for you, okay? Because you're gonna lower your value by having a shitty Instagram, even though she had a positive interaction with you in the before. And you guys, you've been on the show before as well. You see when we do like reviews, girls are like, yo, the hat looks weird. He's posed weirdly here. They can disqualify you for any for anything. So like my thing is like Instagram, make sure it's good because if it's bad, you're gonna mess up. 
Yeah, bro. Just just remember, when girls meet guys, they're looking to disqualify them. Yep. Okay? Every single time. That's how they are. All right? And in today's day and age, right, in the today's sexual marketplace, girls can do that because she's getting DMs from everybody. An average girl can DM a celebrity and get a response. Sorry, guys. That's the sexual marketplace. I don't make the rules. I just report them. You got to become the best version of yourself. Okay? And remember, this whole thing here only works if you got your shit together to some degree if you're a fucking bum you live with your mom you stink you're fat you're you you know you <laughs> you can't talk properly and shit like that this is gonna get fucked up to some degree you're gonna fail Walter? somewhere here all right casey <laughs> i know you're not talking bro <laughs> this is nigga, proof you can't yo, you know yo nigga left miami to go to columbia because he still got no girls bro <laughs> I mean, how to pay for <laughs> everything you know, talking, is nigga. true up until now, you know, up talking, until, bro. you know, uh, you need to be able to talk coherently and well, Casey, uh, articulate so you your know. words well to get laid. I'm going to call you on that one. We got uh, Casey. lots, we got mountains of evidence to prove you that, that were one my detail roommate. is just wrong. Talk to me nice, my friend. Talk to me <laughs> nice, okay? You know I love you, baby. You're, you're, you're weird, bro. Anyway. All right, they're gonna they're Gay? gonna they're gonna kiss each other after the show. Gay. Anyway, <clears throat> you guys are seeing a typical <laughs> argument. So anyway, so you get your sources, right? You you have your sources: cold approach, dating apps, Instagram, social circle. Once you're able to get a lead from one of these sources, you go ahead and get their contact information. All right, get two points of failure at least, guys. Okay. Next, you're going to set up the date. Okay, and you're gonna set up the date either through a FaceTime, a phone call or text okay and this is also known as screening shout out to casey we talked about this a little bit before the show and this right here guys is going to make or break everything because your job okay in this phase isn't to fuck your job is to figure out which girls don't want to fuck and get rid of them you understand one more time for y'all because a lot of guys fuck this up your job in this phase the screening phase isn't necessarily to fuck it's to get rid of the girls that don't want to fuck so what do i mean by this girls that want to put you in the friend zone girls that are like let's just talk here or let's talk on me again i want to talk more i want to get to know you more <laughs> fuck that shit that's a big nope no bitch you could get to know me on the date all right your job here guys is to get rid of the time way stars all right a lot of you motherfuckers will sit there and hang out with a girl, go on multiple dates with her, not even, sorry, excuse me, not even multiple dates, have multiple phone calls with her, talk to her, give her all this goddamn attention. When she had zero intention of sleeping with you, dating you seriously from a romantic standpoint, she told you from the rip that she was going to friend zone you, and you fucking idiots sit there and think, oh, well, let me try to convert her or this other shit. Fuck that, bro. <laughs> Fuck that. You guys, once you have this shit down packed, you should be having so many girls that you're contacting and shit that you don't have time to sit here and have meaningless conversation with stupid bitches that want to waste your time. Yeah. Okay. A lot of you guys sit there and try to convert a girl that doesn't fucking like you. Kick those girls to the fucking curb, become Leonidas, and deal with the girls that are high interest. You don't want to deal with low interest. Even medium interest isn't worth it a lot of the times, man. High interest girls only. Yeah, you got to understand, like, you got to manage your time properly, right? And I'll give you an example here of Chad and Peter. So Peter texts a girl all day. Good morning, beautiful. How are you? How's work? Mind you, she, he's never been on a date with her, and it's been at least a week. Texts her back and forth, yada, 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 right? So eventually, he goes on a date. She's like, hey, I'm hungry. Let's go eat over here. She's leaving the whole, the whole interaction. He gave her all the info about him. No, no longer mystery. Goes on a date, pays for the date. Babe, I'm working tomorrow. I got to go home. So now Peter's out of his whole week of time, pay for food on a date, and it's got done because she has to go to work in the morning. When she went to Chad's house, text her and called her one time and said, yo, pull up. And that was it. So Peter put in all that work for nothing because he didn't read her interest level. Guys, important point here. Talk to girls all day if you want to, but just know if she's really into you, Chad don't wait. She goes to Chad's house or either to, to the spot, meets Chad at the bar. Chad's going home with her after that. You talk to her all week. You might get a dinner date here and there. She leave you high dry because guess what? You give her all info about you. No mystery. And at the same time, bro, her interest level wasn't even there. She didn't even like you in the first place. You missed your whole week for no reason. And whose fault is that? Your Not fault. hers. Yours. Peter's fault. Stupid. Stupid Peter. Yeah, because Stupid. you weren't able to read and understand that she didn't see you like that. Yeah. And here's the other thing, too. Let me tell you guys this. Let's say a girl was like kind of on the fence about you. 
and you just like stop fucking with her, mm-hmm. she might contact you back because yeah. she was amazed at the fact that you um, you were like, ah, oh, fuck this shit. I don't want to talk to her because guys, girls aren't used to getting rejected by guys and girls aren't used to having to work for a man's attention. OK, mm-hmm. half these girls get free attention for nothing more than the fact that they're breathing oxygen. They have a vagina. That's the cold, hard reality. So stop sitting there and giving girls free attention. It's unacceptable. It's going to set you up for failure. I can't tell you how many times as well a girl will be texting a guy, even on a date with, with, the, with the Chad. And it's like, he's texting her, but you don't even know that she's on a date. It's like, bro, Facts. that test game doesn't work, bro. FaceTime call, phone call, text only to set up a date. Hey, Walter, yeah. Don't you waste have, time. Walter, you have an amazing uh, screening one-liner. I don't know if, do you want to say it? I don't <laughs> know. said it before, nigga. Might as well. Okay, so... This is how you can tell it's just really into you. And this is what I use. I'm not going to lie, man. Like, I'm a retired man of God now. I want to have be with, you know, a loving person. And I, I, I cherish women totally. Okay? I hope you can so, handle me. So here's my line. That I used to use back in the day when I was, like, a serial dater. Hey, hope your day was well. What are you up to? And then I'll say, hey, you know what? Like, definitely, it's going to be a fun day. Can't wait to see you. But I hope you can handle me. <laughs> Here's a response from her. Is it either going to be, of course I can. Or like, what do you mean? Or it's going to be like, can you handle me? So depending on her answer, I can get, get your level of interest and then move accordingly. But my thing is, guys, you got to get interest level from the beginning. Because you don't, you don't want to waste time, bro. Like, imagine you're wasting your whole week talking to this chick. And she don't want to smash you. What's the point? Yeah. yeah. Can I add um, one, one thing to that yeah, real quick? Ahead. Yeah. So Walter has his method. Walter um, has his strengths. He's uh, got the right tools for the job and he has a lot of stamina. So his. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we were roommates. We were roommates. We shared, we shared a thin wall. Oh my um, God. <laughs> so Walt, Walter plays to his strengths and he has his good one liner that works for him. Uh, I like to cook. My Instagram is full of like amazing food pictures that I cooked and my screening way of like is this girl dtf is she going to be a time waster or is it going to you know get down to business right away is hey you know we can go on this date i know a nice restaurant or even better how about a nice romantic home-cooked meal i could just cook a meal for you and then if they come right over to have me cook for them straight from an instagram dm on the first date 80 percent chance it's going down so whatever is whatever you're into doesn't have to be cooking doesn't have to be hope you can handle me though but have one way to, to screen whatever it is for you for yeah. your strengths. Well, well, Casey also forgot to tell y'all that he's damn near uh, like a culinary chef. Like he, they go to restaurants with this guy's like, oh, this shit is trash. What the fuck? But guess but, what? Yeah, but his, his Instagram, Instagram shows, shows that, that yeah. very well. So guys, you don't have to buy a Lamborghini or rent one or get a, 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 a fucking mansion. All you need is your hobby and strengths displayed in a cool, fun way for them to see and then use your way of talking or your strength to get her to clarify she likes you or not all right also let me so let let's real quick um so i can give you guys parameters because i know a lot of the guys are like okay okay myron you're saying don't give too much attention but can you tell us how all right i'm gonna keep it nice and simple for y'all 20 minute facetime call or phone call right 20 minutes or if you're gonna text limit the text to setting up a fucking date okay very minimal small talk you want to set up the date and also for facetime a phone call you always end it first. Yes. Don't drag it along. She might want to like, hang up before you and say, hey, you know what? Is it for talking to you? But I got to run. I'll see you on Thursday on a date. Yep. Done. And and you end, it, you, you, you end the phone call with the day and time. And and here's the other thing, too, when you, when you screen it out, is you want to tell her where you're going to, or you can either tell her, yo, meet me at this place at this time. Tell her what to wear and tell her not to be late. Okay. And, and this is where, this is guys, this is so important because so many guys don't do this shit. They either don't do it at all. They keep giving free attention or worse yet, they set the date up way too late after she's already friend zoned you or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And the sexual attraction is gone. You go out with her and she's like, Oh, okay. And then like, if you try to like escalate or something, she's going to think you're weird. This is the importance guys of quickly getting on the date and screening out the time wasters. Okay. Cause most girls, if you allow them will waste your fucking time. I'm going to say that one more time for you guys. Most girls, if you allow them, will waste your fucking time. They will sit there and talk to you about their day. They'll sit there and talk to you about their feelings. They'll talk about their dumbass dog, their cat, ex boyfriend, ex boyfriend, a bunch of stupid shit that doesn't fucking matter. How they shop or their interests or their hobbies. Surprise, nigga. They don't have any. All right. <laughs> 
Oh, I like to go to the beach and hang out with friends. Oh, we're going to go to the club. Bro, you talk to one 21 year old bimbo, I promise you, you've talked to like 90% of them. They're all very similar. All right. Nobody's that special. We're all the same here, too. We like to bang girls, eat food, maybe play some video games and shit. We're all the same. All right. But girls Misogyny. really think that they're special. Yes. Yeah, me with the massage line. Well, a man of God re reads the Bible as well. Yes. And, uh, we pray. So anyway, quick little recap here for y'all that are just joining the misogyny podcast. Today's episode is how to smash 304s. All right. <laughs> sources. OK, you got cold approach, dating apps, Instagram, social circle. OK, those are your sources. From there, you go and get contact information, phone number. Instagram, uh, DM, direct message, WhatsApp, or Telegram, or some other messaging service. Typically, you want at least two points of failure, preferably Instagram and a phone number, okay? Or WhatsApp if, if you're foreign, all right? Then you're going to go into setting it up, whether it's a FaceTime or phone call, right? 20 fucking minutes, guys. No longer, all right? Build some attraction, some mystery, uh, mystery and then go ahead, set up that fucking date. And then with text... Limit it to only texting about the date, maybe some small talk here or there, but you really don't want to waste too much time via text. And let's say she's not biting on the text message and shit, then go ahead and set up that phone call and build more attraction that way. Because if you, I would say a 20 minute phone call will save you like a week of fucking texting. Yeah. I want to add one more thing here for the contact info. If you're a real ninja, you're going to use Telegram. I won't go into the detail about it, but like if you're out there, you know what, what I'm trying to say, advanced game, Telegram works all the time. God damn. <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right. So get this nigga out of here, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound of a neglected dog. <laughs> this dude fresh hasn't seen his dog in weeks, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to grab here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hero grab time. this nigga, bro. I'll be back in five minutes. Uh, he mad as hell. He's like, yo, why are you? Yo, you, you never take care of me. Look at him. He's mad as shit. He's like, yo, making all them noises. Okay, he's good. He's good. All right. All right. Uh, date so now. now we're on to the dates, dates. okay, guys? <laughs> So Yo, after smell. you set up the date and you screened her out, right? You want to go ahead and set up the date. Now, here are some rules that you need to remember when you set up the date. Guys, you got to set up the date with getting laid in mind. Why do I say this? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, so you don't waste time. Number two, so that she can feel your masculine presence because you have to be a strong masculine man to try to go for sex, right? You're not a pussy, right? And then number three, you got to set it up for yourself to win. Okay, guys? Dating game ain't fair. All right, girls have all the advantages. The least you can fucking do is put yourself in a situation where you can at least control the goddamn frame. All right. Now, number one, make sure it's close to you. All right, guys. You don't have to live in a major city area, like in a downtown area, whatever it may be, but it helps a lot, man. All right. You want to live somewhere where there's a lot of attractions or things close to you that you can go ahead and take a girl to. All right. Or have some type of entertainment. All right. Make sure it's close to you. Do not go to the girl, all right? Don't even fucking meet her halfway. All right, guys, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Dating is like war. We don't negotiate with terrorists over here. <laughs> you don't fucking go to her, and you don't even meet her halfway. She's got to come to you. There's two main reasons for this. Number one, you're going to gauge interest level. And then number two is so that she invests first. Guys, girls rarely invest in guys on first dates, if ever. You need to get her to invest in you, all right? And when she says, oh, well, uh, why don't we meet halfway, blah, blah, blah. Your line to that is going to be, yo, I have something cool planned for us. It's a surprise. You got to come here. I got some, some cool shit planned, right? And you're the man. It's your job to plan the fucking date, of course. So don't tell her, don't, don't say, oh, uh, come here, right? Close to you and you don't have, you don't have a plan. You got to have a, have a plan in place, okay? Next, make sure your apartment is fucking clean. Yo, I can't tell you how many times a guy has brought a girl back to his place and it's a fucking pigsty. It stinks. There's shit streaks all over the fucking toilet. It smells bad. they are embarrassing medications all over the place, right? So, yo, make sure your place is clean, all right? I should have put this shit as step one, hmm. but you guys get the point, all right? Make sure your place is clean. Next, pay for the fucking date, okay? Well, actually, let me just go here. Pick, pick multiple locations, yeah. all right? Why do I say pick multiple locations? The reason why, guys, is because when you go to multiple locations, you create the illusion that the date is actually longer than it really is, and you're able to change the temperance slash the vibe of the location that you're at per place that you go to. What do I mean by this? So typically, this is how I would set up my dates, okay? First place would be like uh, like a bar, right, where I could sit across from her and talk to her. 
Why do I, personally, I like to sit across from them because I grow that fucking girl. I, I ask her a bunch of questions. I make her qualify to me. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your family, et cetera, et cetera. Get her, get her, you know, loose and get her talking about herself. Right. And the reason why I do this is because whoever asks the questions controls the frame. When I was an agent and I was asking the criminal questions back in the day, you, you control the frame and it, it gives you a position of authority where they don't know too much about you, but you're getting to learn about them. OK, most of the time, a lot of you idiots will sit there and let the girl question you. And then you answer, oh, yeah, well, I do this and I do that. Oh, do, do, do. And then you qualify to the girl. What happens when you sit there and you qualify to the girl? She starts to think what? She's fucking better than you. All right. And when a girl thinks she's better than you, guess what happens? She looks down upon you. When she looks down upon you. Guess what happens? She loses attraction for you. She loses attraction for you. She don't want to fuck you. That's why a lot of you guys fail. You sit there and you qualify to girls. Don't qualify to fucking women. You ask the questions, all right? At least in the first location. Make her qualify to you, all right? And it's even better. You know what I purposely ask? I ask shit like, so what are your hobbies? <laughs> what do you do for fun, right? Because I know they're going to say dumb shit. Oh, I like to go to the club. I like the beach, blah, blah, blah. And then what do I say? Oh, so you have no hobbies at all. Fantastic. I'll say some shit like that. Why? Because that's probably the first time or one of the few times where a guy is poking fun at them for them being you know, uninteresting or boring. And I tell girls this shit to their face. Now I know that sounds, oh my God, that's kind of productive. That's so mean. Oh my God. Guys, women love assholes. Okay. That's just the way it is. They, they say nice guys finish last and it's been that way for decades. Why? Because when you sit there and you're nice and you qualify, and you do all this other fuck shit, girls don't respect you. Okay. They just don't. Girls want a superior. They want a dominant leadership type guy, confident guy. And if you're able to make fun of her, Without thinking twice, what does that say about you? Damn, this nigga don't give a fuck. If he doesn't give a fuck, that means he probably has other girls. If he has other girls, that probably means he's having sex with these other girls. That means he's of higher value. That's how it fucking goes. That's the world. That's how it is. All right? So you need to demonstrate this shit. So pick multiple locations. The first, uh, going back to what I was saying with the first location, that's where you can like get some conversation, get to know her a little bit better, right? Second location is where you can uh, be a little bit more intimate. You could take her to a club, a bar, whatever it may be. And what that does is you guys can dance. And when you guys dance, guess what happens? You guys physically escalate. This is another mistake that a lot of guys make. They don't touch a girl during the entire date. And then they try to make a fucking move and kiss her. She's like, oh, what the fuck? This is like weird. It's because you didn't <laughs> properly escalate. All right. You have to, guys. You know, uh, Owen Cook said this shit. Shout out to Owen Cook because we got Casey in here. He's a good friend of his. And I agree with him 100%. Women are like a volume knob, all right? You got to turn it up nice and slow. You can't just go, ah, because when you do that, you blow the speakers out, right? But with men, you can just turn the light switch on. Oh, ready, dick hard, ready to go. With girls, it doesn't operate like that. You have to turn the volume knob nice and slow. So when you escalate physically, right, every time you touch her, it's got to, you got to work your way up the totem pole, all right? So maybe it might start with, putting your hand on the small of her back when you walk with her. Then it could be, you know, uh, holding her by the top of her back, right? And the, Or it could be like uh, holding her by the hand when you're leading her to the next location, whatever it may be. And then it could be, you know, you have her sit next to you at the second location and you slowly escalate, you touch her thigh, whatever it may be. And what happens is if she responds, um, how do I say this, positively to it, she doesn't stop you or she doesn't say, oh, or she doesn't move away or anything like that, then you can continue to escalate. Now, if she says, oh, like this, then you already know. You got some work to do. You need to build some more attraction. You need to neg her a little bit more. Maybe stop being a fucking pussy nice guy. Typically, Mystery used to say this shit too. Shout out to Mystery. He used to say, if a girl, like, um, you get something uh, like a negative indicator of interest, right, you would, you would basically, like, push her away. You'd make fun of her. You would neg her, as you would say, right? And then you would demonstrate more high, higher value. So let's say you touch her, she's like, Ugh, like this, like, then you make something joke like, oh, well, your lipstick is a little bit smeared. And then you would demonstrate higher value. You tell some kind of story that would demonstrate higher value, or maybe you'd hug another girl in front of her or whatever it may be. All these little things, like, here's the thing. Women can't explain to you what they're attracted to. They just respond. You understand? So sometimes things that may look counterproductive, like when you're actually doing it, actually increase your value to some degree. All right. So, so you want to uh, physically escalate guys. All right. And you got to do this nice and slow, you know, don't go in for the fucking make out when you haven't touched the entire date. All right. That's going to be a little bit weird unless you've been having like some, you know, you're advanced and you've been doing some sexual innuendos, whatever, but that's on another level. But a lot of you guys, I'm talking from a basic level here. You'll be on a date with a girl. You haven't touched her at all. You're getting ice cream at a random ass spot, middle of the fucking day. Oh, come here. And you try, try, try to and, fucking make out with her. And then you pull uh, Donald Trump. And then you, what was that? Uh, Donald Trump. Oh, grab by the pussy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, y'all niggas do some shit like that. Next thing you know, you're going to be on fucking, you know, Newsweek uh, for grape, you know? So you guys got to escalate nice and slow and, uh, you know, be able to read the situation, man. And 
uh, and then move appropriately. And then also pay for the day. All right. Now, why do I say pay for the day? No, it's not to be a fucking simp or any of this other shit. Obviously, you're going to pick a date that isn't that expensive in the first place. Right. You don't want to invest too much in the beginning. But the reason why I say pay for the date, guys, it's not for the girl. It's for you. And what I mean by that is when you pay for the date, you control the frame. When you control the frame, you control the cadence. When you control the cadence, you control everything around it. And then the girl is going to be in your fucking world, not the other way around. Anytime a girl has to plan a date or she's paying for it or she's the one like plan it out or whatever. Guess what? You lose leverage. You lose frame. She has the frame. And guess what happens when girls have the frame? No sex, my friend. Girls don't want to sit there and be in charge of the relate of the of the date and making sure that it's fun. They want you to fucking do that shit. No girl wants to say, well, you know, I went out with this guy and I, uh, you know, I picked a location and we went there and, you know, I ended up bringing him back to my place and I fucked him. No. You know what girls want? They want you to plan a date. Charm them, make them feel happy, disarm them, bring them back to your place under some pseudo fucking excuse. Hey, you want to go uh, check out my underwater basket weaving con fucking collection? Sure. And then you go up there, you touch her a little bit, some moves her, put on some fucking weekend, you smash her, and then she goes ahead and tells her friends the next day, it just happened. He was so charming. That's what girls want, all right? Plausible denia fucking ability. That's what girls want, guys. They don't want to take accountability for fucking you. They want to just be able to say, he was charming and it was fun and things just happened. All right. That's the reality. All right. You guys already know girls are allergic to the word accountability. So they want you to be the charming guy to charm them out of the out of the um, panties or thong in this case. So this guy's right here is dates. OK. And this is how you set it up again. Close to you. Pick multiple locations. Pay for the day. Control the frame. Keep your place fucking cleaned. OK. Smelling good. And then physically escalate. Of course, be cognizant of her comfort level. Don't be an idiot. Some girls are going to be different than others. Some girls are okay with you touching them. Some girls, you might have to, you know, talk to them a little bit more, generate conversation. You have to be able to assess the girl's comfort level, okay? And if she responds negatively, back off. Don't be a fucking weirdo. Like, hey, hey. No, you got to be able to read signs. Oh, sorry, you know, don't apologize. Don't be a pussy about it. Like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, my bad. Some shit like that. Or, oh, oh, I didn't realize someone was uptight tonight. Some shit like that. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> right? But the point is, is that you have to be confident about it and you got to be prepared to escalate. That's what you do on a fucking date, man. Because here's the other thing, too, if you don't escalate. All right. Let's say you go on a date with a girl and she likes you. She thought you were attractive, but you didn't fucking touch. You didn't make a move or whatever. She's going to think you're a fucking pussy. She's going to think you're weird. She might even think you're gay. All right. So and I've seen it before where a girl goes out with a guy. She thought he was cute. She wanted to hook up with him, but he was so fucking soft. He was so fucking pussy. She didn't want to make a move. And she was like, yo, what the hell? Hmm. Now nah, I'm good because she looks at it like, yo. Did he not find me attractive? Like she feels, she feels bad. So then what does she do? She's like, I don't want to go out with him again because I feel rejected. So this is what happens. You don't properly physically escalate, man. You obviously don't want to over escalate, but you got to be able to read the woman. Okay. Like I said before, it's a volume knob guys, volume knob. All right. Then, like I said before, you should always be trying to get sex on the first date. Once you get the six. All right. I would say what? Three dates max fresh. Honestly, uh, it depends on the person, but typically speaking, you want three dates. Uh, let me just go out to dates real quick because I didn't cover that. So dates, right, guys? Understand this. This is what I, this is my saying I say all the time on the show. And before that, I would say a day, a day, a day, a day keeps the blue balls away. So, for example, breaking this down, Myron did a very good job. I just want to add DHV displaying uh, value on a date. So, for example, close to you. Very good point. You want to plan dates close to you because guess what? You're the leader of this, of this scenario, of this of this uh, situation, so you want to plan accordingly for your best benefits. Close to you, which means a, a, maybe a bar, a club, or maybe a lounge close to your crib, so you can take her there, multiple locations, and then back to your spot. But to display high value, it can be done in simple ways, guys. Planning the, the date A to Z, cool. You end up at the the um, bar, you get some tacos at the lounge, and from, from the lounge to your spot. Now, to display high value, it's simple. Make sure those spots that you go to, you know, the bartender, you may know the owner, you may know the, the security guard. Hey, simple as, hey, good to see you again, Jack. Hey, Jack, free drinks on me. She's like, damn, this guy has social proof. He's cool with people. People like him. That's from high value. We happen to be, to be fa famous or rich. So just being cool with the bartenders, security, and the owner gets you indoors because they can see you as a man of value. Secondly, pay for the date. Of course. You invited her on a date, you should pay because you're the one, you're the leader. So if you don't pay for the date, try to finesse her. Oh, I'm not going to pay. You, you look lame, bro. So just pay for the date. And then clean your place as well is a very good point. I can't tell you how many times, guys, girls come to your spot. 
and they might like you. They might want to actually just do stuff with you, but they may see dog poo poo stains or shit streaks like you said earlier. Yeah. And it's like, are you smart? gross? Like, hey, uh, it's getting kind of late. I got to go home. And before you know, it, she's out of your house. So, guys, a clean house. And look, you might not want to do it yourself. I get the 100%. Hire a maid. She can come into you, to your spot, clean it in an hour or two, and then you're done. Then, physically escalate. Now, this point, guys, should be done all throughout the date. So, from the very beginning. So, so once you take it to the first spot, let's say, let's say you're walking across the street, hold her hand while you're doing that to see where she's at. If she lets you hold your hand, great. You're in a good place. Now, once that's done, actually, no, even before that, when you meet her, give her a hug and a, a, a good hug, right? Then second part is hold her hand across the street. Then we get to the lounge area, get a drink for you or her if you drink alcohol at all. And then if it's a dance floor, perfect. Go ahead and dance because now... Plausible deniability. You gave her a hug, <laughs> right? You're holding your hand across the street. Now you're dancing with her. Now, I don't know about you, but if I dance with a chick, nigga, I'm breaks up, nigga. So she's feeling that shit. So off rip, she knows what time it is. <laughs> then, multiple locations, you go to another spot, you dance some more, you know, go for the kiss at the, at the third spot and say, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to say what I do, but let's say, for example, you have a pet goldfish, right? Hey, you like, you like pets? I love pets. I got to go goldfish. You want to go see it? Sure. Let's have a, and that's an example. I got a dog. I think, you want to yeah, see my dog? I, think, I don't want to say what I do because it's going to think. But yeah, the point is, guys, not, is that you want to have her come out of your spot in a cool, not like a weird way. So all this is being done at the same time you're escalating throughout the date. So that's how I would cover dates and display how about a DHV the whole way through. You know if I add something on? Yeah, yeah, sure, go, go ahead, ahead, man. Yeah, so this is a very advanced. This might be over a lot of guys' heads, but I'll just say it anyway and try to make it quick. So there is cold approach, dating apps, Instagram, social circle. What I like to do, what I'm a big fan of, is combining all four of those. Really three because Instagram is a dating app, whatever, combining all of them. So basically what I do, this is the quick, short, dirty version, is I find in my city a whale. A whale, by definition, is a guy who likes to throw around a lot of money, spend a lot of money. A high roller basically is a whale. So what I do is I leverage the power of Instagram, social media. I have a really good profile, and I have a lot of methods of getting a lot of reach. Who'd you, who'd you learn it from? <clears throat> who'd you learn it from? Uh, Hero. <laughs> Hero was my mentor, you know, Hero, Hero being uh, the most beautiful of the three people in that apartment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, uh, Walter is, uh, he is a black belt of the Instagram arts, that's for sure. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, thank you. And... Yeah, through a lot of reach, uh, reaching out to a lot of hot girls, I can provide a lot of value for this said whale and say, hey, how about this? What if we did this? What if I get four guys plus 12 girls over to your penthouse tonight and, you know, you pay for it, you hire a private chef and get some drinks. Um, private chef's not that expensive for a true whale in any city, but especially in Colombia where I live, it's very, very cheap. And then it really combines all of them because you have basically your own little party. You don't know all the girls there, so you're kind of, quote unquote cold approaching some of the girls maybe other guys brought some girls it's obviously all coming from instagram and uh, it's obviously a social circle as well and it's just more fun you're you have uh 12 different girls you can flirt with uh you get to talk to your buddies as well you're not just bored by the girl uh all night and it basically makes flaking a non-issue so if you're talking to three four girls at a, at a time you can just buy all five mm. i also want to say least. this too this works really well guys when you're an expatriate like you're in somewhere like Colombia, brazil um, a foreign country and you're an American guy and you find another guy that's like well off in that country, yeah. it'll work really well because like, yo, uh, yo, I know a bunch of ch- I, optimally, you want to be the one throwing the party, but Casey's able to finesse, I get it, so he's like, yo, uh, you got you got the penthouse, fuck it, uh, like I got a bunch of chicks, because let, let's be honest, a lot of these rich dudes don't have the ability to actually attract these girls, a lot of them have to refer to either like leading with their wallet or yeah. just straight up tricking or just paying for sex, especially in these other locations so if you're a passport bro and you're one of these countries Thailand, Brazil, Colombia, etc. Right, where you have a higher SMV as a as an American citizen, you know there's expatriates there. You can basically be like, "Yo, listen, I got chicks. Let's throw a fucking party. Let's make it happen. You invite them there." And you, and the other thing too is like he's ba- what Casey is essentially doing is like, "Yo, I'm setting up almost five dates at once. Yes. All the girls are show- coming up to come to meet me, right?" So if one of them does flake, it ain't that big a deal. Yeah. And he gets what? Social proof because there's other girls there. He's throwing a party. He's the leader of the event to a degree, right? Which this is advanced social circle game here. Yeah. So what he's able to do is able to leverage that, bam, and then, you know, have a party. And then what do girls want? Girls want to have fun. He All created right? his own club by being creative exactly. and adding value yeah. off it. That's genius, guys. That's genius. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but you, uh, guys, you get... real quick, by the way, I will tell a story, a W wrist story. We got 4K likes. If you do that, I'll tell you a story about how to finish and close a date one-on-one, refresh, 
behind the scenes. All right, go ahead. No, just to wrap up. Yeah, I mean, it has everything you get. I mean, we can go on forever. You get awesome Instagram photos and content for your Instagram. You and this is this is like content with girls that you can use. You don't want to put you unless you're like a club promoter doing club promoter game. You don't want you and like ten girls. But if it's you in a group setting, there's all these girls. It's not clear who you're with. You get a great Instagram photos, great networking. Like I said, it's just more fun. I don't like one on one dates very much. It's just me basically killing time until we're we're getting ready to smash unless she's that interesting which normally they're not but um <laughs> <laughs> but guys i will say this though bottom line is girls just want to have fun yeah. that's pretty much it right? yeah so um so that yeah that's one way so what what was so let's go back to the drawing board here what was casey doing well he was able to use um instagram social circle game and then maybe some of these girls he cold approached right and he was able to loop them into instagram and then over into social circle with the party etc so Cre creative you're, you're able to use different uh, uh different uh, methodologies and sourcing and then use them together guys yeah, yeah all right and then what does he do obviously he goes ahead he gets a phone number instagram dm whatever he goes through some kind of screening with texting them and then bam he sets up the date the only difference is what is he doing he's throwing a fucking party okay so if you take casey's scenario it still falls into this um this flow chart here essentially all right guys every date right and this is how you're going to smash most of the girls is you're going to have to go on dates guys uh you know i hate to say it guys but doing night game and going out there and getting for one night, first night lays and all this other bullshit it's it's not as common as you think you got to be really good at running game you got to have some kind of social status to some degree. Maybe you got a table. Maybe you're a really good smooth talker. Maybe you're tall. Maybe you're extremely attractive, uh, etc. But you know the days of like go, going to nightclubs and getting girls or whatever, bro. Those days are slowly coming to an end because the reality is a lot of girls don't go to nightclubs to meet guys. They go to nightclubs to take fucking pictures for their Instagram so they can go ahead and show off to other chicks and get a higher status guy. Yep. That's the reality. Girls go to clubs nowadays to so flex to see, yo, look at the section I'm in. Look at all this liquor that I didn't pay for that I'm taking pictures with. That's what girls typically uh, go to clubs for. The days of meeting people in person and going to clubs to meet people, those days are fucking gone. Yep. Now, does that mean that you can't – like, I still advocate to go to clubs and run night game and all that Get shit. Practice. I'm telling you how to do it. Get practice. Get that practice. It makes you better with being smooth and talking on your feet. That's very important. However – I'd be lying to you if I told you, yo, you could just use night game as your main sourcing method and be great. Those days are done, bro. You know what I mean? It's it's not night fucking 2001, 2002 anymore when Mystery and all them were doing that stuff, using can openers, all this other stuff. It, it's not as effective as uh, uh, as it was 20 years ago. You have some, Casey? No, just night game is garbage. It's good for sharpening the sword, keeping your skill set good, and, and starting when you're new. But beyond that, yeah. The, yeah. the power from Instagram. Instagram. The ROI is just too low. Yeah. It, it's I don't I would I don't want to go ahead and say it's like complete garbage, but I will say that the return on investment is extremely Dude. low. When you do the the math, like think about it. Spending the money to go to the club, you know, Ubers, taxis, buying alcohol, getting dressed for it, the preparation. Um, uh, you know, and then Ruining when you're your actually, rhythm, your sleep not even schedule. That. Yeah. Yo, scale, nigga. Yo, scale. Yeah. You're in the club, bro. You talk to what 10, 20 girls the most? I'm on Instagram. I can damn 100 girls. It's just scale, bro. Like, scale and success goes a long way. So, cold approach is cool and all. It's cool for a little pocket here and there. But, dude, longevity, you want scale. When, when I was running night game the most back from like 2018 to like 2020 here in Miami, guys, when I was like going out all the time, bro, I was going one for like 40. Like, yeah, that's just that's just how it is. That's like, not bad. And, and, that, and that's, yeah, because because my thing is, I would go, I would go up to a girl. If she was on any type of bullshit, I would immediately walk away. I walk up to her. Hey, what's your name? Blah, blah, blah. If she like looked away or she was like not as interested or whatever, or if, even if she gave me like a weird ass handshake when I shook her hand, it was like a dead fish. I'd be I'd walk away because I was screening out girls that didn't want to fuck. Right. And that's kind of what you have to do in that game, because if you sit there and give every single girl 20, 30 minutes of your time and having pointless conversation in a loud ass nightclub, it's a waste of time. So you got to be very efficient with getting rid of girls that want to waste time because a lot of girls do the same shit. They go to nightclub for what? To drink free liquor and get free attention. You got to figure out which girls are worth it, which ones aren't. So, uh, but anyway, going back to what I was saying. So before I get into, before I digress. So number one, so quick little recap for y'all that are just joining, okay? Rewind. So we started off with sources, right? You got cold approach, dating apps, Instagram, social circle, right? Broken down more uh, distinctly into cold approach, day and night game, uh, dating apps, Tinder, Bumble, and sugar sites. Um, Instagram, basically DM and girls are using the discover page. And then you got um, social circle game, which is meeting girls from school, work, or and or social circle parties. Then you got contact info. Once you get, once you meet her through some one of these sources, you get two points of contact, typically an Instagram and a phone number, right? Or if you're foreign, a WhatsApp, whatever it may be. Then you go into the setup, FaceTime, phone call, text. Preferably, we want y'all to FaceTime the girl, 
Uh, if not, then you could go ahead and do a phone call. No more than 20 minutes, 20 motherfuckers. Minutes, yeah. Don't sit there for five hours talking to her, you know, like, with your, on your fucking belly, talking to her like, oh, my God, you're so hot, blah, 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 like all this stupid shit. No. Go in there with a purpose. Have a general conversation. Build some attraction. Get to know her a little bit. Set up the fucking date. Don't hang up that phone until you set up the date. Do it within 20, 30 minutes, all right? No more than that. No, 20 minutes, all right? And texting, keep it minimal. Your job here is to screen out the time wasters. Then from there, set up the date close to you. Go to multiple uh, locations. Pay for the date, man. Control the frame. Clean your goddamn place before, all right? And hide all your weird medication, motherfuckers. And then physically escalate on the date. Don't be worried about it. Do it in a pace where she's comfortable, all right? Then that hopefully will lead to sex, all right? Always try to smash on the first date, goddammit. No more than three, all right? I say, depending on your tolerance levels, me typically is no more than one to two. And mostly one, but <laughs> but it depends on your time level. But through up to three is okay, all right. And then retention after you have sex with her, guys. This is where you determine if you like her or you're not, or if you want to continue to see her or not. All right, that's when you can start going on dinner dates, right? More expensive dinner dates. If you like her, you go on more, you know, tr dates, maybe go to the zoo or some other weird shit like that, yep. the museum, shit that you would never pick on yep. a normal first date. Trip, Movies, trips, lol. Yeah, I put trips, lol. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> and then uh, obviously, conversations like somebody earlier was like, Yo, but this girl cries to me, blah, blah, blah. This is the point where you decide if she's worthy of you giving her that type of attention, guys. You don't sit there and have long, drawn-out conversations and give girls your time unless you're fucking them, all right? I'm, I'm just going to say it, all right? You don't, you don't sit there and be a fucking simp and sit there and talk to chicks that aren't smashing you, all right? That's a waste of your goddamn time. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then obviously, other other perks of whatever, you know, boyfriend energy you might you want to give. Oh, we get, are we banned off Twitch yeah. now? Okay, all right, we got to kill the Twitch stream. All right, damn it. All right, guys. Come on to YouTube. I Come guess. on over to YouTube, niggas. All right, we got to kill the streams everywhere else because I was saying simp too much. God damn it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why of all words is that word banned? That's hilarious. Uh, uh, it's, well, it's, because because uh, um, simps pay, cut, you know they pay, pay the bills on Twitch. It's insulting yeah. their yeah yeah yeah, their yeah like yeah, like yeah, Pokemon yeah. and shit with all the yeah, simp niggas over there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love you so much. Oh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right, yeah. Come on over to YouTube, motherfuckers. They pay the bills. Basically. Yeah, they pay the bills for yeah. a lot of them girls, them e girls. Yeah. But um, yeah, guys. So that's that's in general, man. How you to get laid one on one. Now for advanced talk. We have to go deeper than this, maybe by Patreon wall, but this is a general overlay of what you can do. And honestly, honestly, guys, it's not that hard. Once you know what you're doing, it's not that hard. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you where most of you guys fuck up. Sourcing. Most of y'all fuck up right here in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. And what I mean by this, Chris. Yeah. What's up? Come on, man. The girls are here. Yeah, okay. Well, get in the game, man. All right. So we're, most of you guys fuck up right here, guys, where you're not sourcing enough girls. All right. You got to make sure that you have enough sources more le enough leads coming in so that you don't come off as thirsty. Just like Fresh said, a day to day keeps the blue balls away and it also keeps the thirst away because when you're talking to a lot of girls, guess what? You can't give a lot of attention to a lot of girls at the same time. So you have to pick and choose and prioritize the girls that are most interesting. You know what that does for you? That makes you more attractive because when you don't sit there and give free attention to any girl, she get, guess what happens? Your attention starts to have fucking value on it. A lot of you guys sit there and talk to girls that don't give a fuck about you. Stop doing that shit. All right? Stop. Talking to girls that don't give a fuck about you or don't want to fuck you. Fuck that shit. Let her go talk to some other goddamn simp that she's not interested in. That's not going to be you. All right? So you got to get more leads in. A lot of you guys don't even talk to fucking girls and wonder, why am I not getting laid for a year? Have you cold approached any girls today? Probably more than likely. Have you have you actually made a good dating app profile with professional pictures? Probably. You got a dumbass pictures with you and your selfies and all this other bullshit. Is your Instagram good? I already know. 95% of y'all. And then social circle. Are you actually going ahead and appropriately approaching girls in social circle? And I want to tell you this. Even though most people meet most of the women on social circle, this can be a double-edged sword for you. This could really fuck you up. Get You fuck with a girl that you work with. You fuck with a girl that you go to school with. And you guys have a, a tight circle of friends. This can come back and bite you in the fucking ass, which is me and first wife, me and first tell you all the time. Don't fuck girls that you work with. And if you're going to smash girls that you go to school with, make sure that there's a layer of re re removal. And I talk about this in more detail with College Game, which we could do a whole other episode on that. But the point I'm trying to make is you don't want to rely on a social circle game like 99% of dudes do. You want to be using a cold approach, dating apps, Instagram, most li most, mostly because you're you're meeting girls from in different social circles that you don't necessarily know. So that's where most of y'all fuck up. And then the next part where you guys fuck up is you might get the contact info. Cool. Then you'll sit there and continuously talk to a girl that doesn't give a fuck about you for days, weeks, months on end, sometimes even fucking years. Some of y'all will sit there talking to a chick from fucking, I don't know, 
the, Romania. Oh, I met her on Match.com and she loves me. I'm going to bring her in two years later. Next thing you know, she looks like a fucking beluga whale. And you wonder what the hell happened. And you're sitting there at the fucking airport like, oh, my God, stupid. And that, my friend, is a L. But why do you do stupid shit like that? Because you don't have enough leads coming in. You start to get thirsty and you start to give too much attention to girls that, quite frankly, don't fucking deserve it. Or you sit there and text girls that had zero intention of fucking you in the first place. And they'll sit there and they'll never meet up in person. Guys, if she doesn't want to meet with you in person uh, quickly, fuck that shit. Move on to the next girl. All right. Cool. There, you, there you have it. And then, oh, and then the other mistakes that you guys make when you actually go on dates is you fucking go to her, you go meet her at, in her location. You meet her halfway. You like don't plan a date out. Tell her to pick where to go and shit. No, man, and, fuck that. And also for your safety, guys, if you go to her house, bro, you don't know who she's. She has a boyfriend, a husband, a fiance, ex lover. That's crazy. You pull up to her crib. Actually, that rapper died that way. Trouble. Um, I think her, the, the girl's ex came and killed him, um, because he was messing with her. Guys, safety wise. You want out of your crib, bro. Going to her is an L because you never know what her, her scenario is. And if you end up in that scenario, you may end up dead. So safety wise, guys, make sure it's like your crib. Especially if you got money or if you're meeting some chick from like a sugar site. You never know. Yo, if you if you got money or you're meeting a chick off a sugar site, whatever, never fucking. I mean, you should never be meeting a girl anyway. But you have to be even more cognizant of the fact that they might set you up to get fucking robbed, bro. Or get a hotel. Yeah. Shit, I mean, something. Yeah, man. So, um, so yeah. So with dates, that's where a lot of people fuck up is that they basically... Um, don't plan a date. They don't pay for it. They try to finesse with this other bullshit. Guys, I'm not telling you how to take her to fucking Salt Bay. But what I am saying is that have it planned out. Make sure that it's not going to break your pockets. Know where you stand financially and make um, accommodations to that. Yeah. And then with the retention, that's on you. You pick if you want to fucking keep her around. If she's useless, kick her to the curb. If she's good, if she's a good girl, bro, keep her around. You know what I mean? Put her, put her, on, the, uh, put her on the team. Okay? And then go from there. And then if, you, you know, we talked about how to vet a girl out to be your girlfriend. You know, obviously one year of... Uh, of, <laughs> of vetting, right? To make sure she's worthy of being uh, your girlfriend and having that fucking title because guess what? Your attention and your time and your fucking title as boyfriend does matter. Don't be a fucking simp. And she's going to buy you that shit. All right? All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, you got some chats here, Chris? Yeah. Okay. G Complex says, all we do is win, fresh and fit. Shout out to you. Black Wolf says, fresh and fit is now the land of quintuple 100K channels. Bay Bay. Special fuck you to the haters. What happened to those three days to be terminated? It's gone, my friend. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, and that bum got surpassed too. <laughs> fuck out of here on everything. All right. Um, ten Jeez. bucks from TBC Zach goes set. down hundred pounds, making more than a hundred k. I owe it all watching the fresh to fit. Let's get back to basics. FNF Discord. We up. That's what we're talking about, my friend. Yep. It's unacceptable to be poor, poor and fat, man. Okay. Uh, Monarchist one goes taking notes on this guy shows us how much <laughs> shows show us how to sell dreams step by step. Please give us three scenarios or more, please. Good job in the new sound bite, uh, stuttering kid, and we need a Tata Day Junior sound bite. Will Turbin Myron make? It to the show. Okay, uh, maybe, bro. Maybe. <laughs> Go ahead, Fresh. <clears throat> um, IG is Masiam says, Gotta say, I love how you guys are putting in D304s on W4s. Always a new one in training in the background. Making holes use useful again. <laughs> Bassi Javier says, $100. Shout out to you, bro. Don Marco. Wavy Rich. Myron, Myron, how would you approach girls at a mall? Are you cold approaching as they walk past? Or are you going out of your way to grab them and get their attention? What's the number of approaches you would make, uh, I guess, in the mall? Uh, and I guess you had something to say. How I get on the show, I got so much to say. <laughs> okay. Vasil? Who is that? Uh, same person who donated 100 bucks. If, you, if you're a girl, uh, just DM Chris. If yeah. you're a dude, you got to be a somebody, bro. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, dude. Like, you got you to gotta be a fucking somebody. Like, we don't just bring randoms and bring them on the pod, bro. Like, yeah. does Joe Rogan, like, let randoms just come on his shit? <laughs> like, ask yourself that question. Nope. So... Michael Tulsian says, ahead. I forgive all the haters from episode. It's all love, guys. Let's make men strong again. Interviewing held on Friday. All right. Pro Alt HPHP says, Red Pilling for Life, Myron and Fresh, much love. I see their overall growth of the brand. Not just Myron's hair. Keep y'all foot on their neck. Yes, the hair is growing back, guys. <laughs> the, the, hair, the hair transplant is working. It's working. All right. Nav. Uh, say you set up uh, the first day on a Monday for Saturday. Should you talk to her in between those days? Because there's a lot of time in between. Yes, but uh, keep it to a minimum. Yeah, bro. Honestly, I, I would like to set up the date immediately. Why are you waiting until Saturday, nigga? You, you should be using weekends to go source other girls. You should be having your dates during the week if you can. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can. Uh, uh, all right. We good? Uh, yeah. Because those came in after, right? Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're reading only 20 and up. 
Uh, and then the last one here, Mo goes, keep it simple and have frame. If you're interested more, if you're interested more than she is, you already lost. Let her know you're not an idiot with your actions. Yeah, bro. I mean, it's really simple, bro. Like girls size you up immediately when they meet you on a date. If you're a lower status guy, they know right away just by how you behave. Yep. I'm telling you, man, women have like a sixth sense for losers. Like they can smell that shit. And if you're too much of a loser, <laughs> they might just walk out. Oh, uh, I'm feeling sick. Or, oh, my friend, I, I got to go help her some bullshit. And then, bam, she fucking gone, bro. And we have a, a Zoom call with a more in-depth uh, definition and, I guess, like, meaning for advanced level game, if you guys want that as well. It's the Blueprint. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. First so day, uh, Blueprint. Uh, damn, is that on Patreon? I don't even know if we have it on there. We'll, we'll find it for you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah guys, that's... get in the DMs on the Man course. Yeah. It's dropping for Black Friday week. Yes. And, yeah, man, get your Instagram on point. Get DMs on the Get on the fucking waiting list right now, guys, so you can get the course. Um, but yeah, man, and we go into more detail on this because obviously, as you guys can see, there's some nuances here, like yeah. using dating apps appropriately. That's a whole other episode in itself. Each one has sugar sites. It. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, using Instagram effectively, running social circle game. That's its own thing. But we're giving you guys just a broad Overlay. overview of if you want to get girls. Any guy that's good with women, they're doing this system to some degree. All right. You could take literally whatever the fuck they're doing and plug and play it into this flow chart. And you're going to see, okay, they're using social circle game. They're getting girls contact info. They're setting it up through text or phone call. And then they're having some kind of day or some kind of social interaction in fucking person, whether it's a party, one-on-one -on -one date, social gathering, some degree. That's what every guy is doing. Yeah. And then they're leveraging, they're um, funneling it that's into sex. Dan Bizarri, uh, Bilzerian, yeah. Tate's. Casey, us. Everyone's like, doing it to some everyone degree, does it, bro. Everyone does right? It. So this is all the different methodologies, guys. So uh, yeah, make sure to like the goddamn video, subscribe also, to the fucking channel. So with some girls right now, as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna yeah we're gonna go right back to back, guys, and have it after hours for y'all. So hope you guys like the fucking sh uh, episode, man. Uh, like the goddamn video, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. it. Peace. And a new outro, man. Oh yeah, new no, outro, no outro, guys. That's being great. debuted right now. Check it out. Let's go. Bye -bye.